Hello everybody! Welcome back to another video. Um, also, I have my Mario shirt on for this occasion. I actually did something that um, I asked the community post this. Is I was doing something, I think it's been literally two years since I have done these. I can't believe it's been that long, but it's the end of the month challenges. I used to do them back. Yeah, like anyone who watched the channel, like, you know, before I started doing analyzing stuff, when I did like gameplays and whatnot, any of you guys would probably know if you were from that back then, I would uh, do end of the month challenges. And it's like, like, no matter what day it was, like at the end of each month, like on the 31st or 30th, whatever it was, I would do some sort of challenge. And so I asked a community post, I wanted to do a character analysis of someone, and I did it between Bowser, and I was also going to do Adam Warlock. Also, apologies if you hear some background noise, there's some yard work work do, go, going on today. And so that's what that is outside. But anyway, so it was between Bowser and Adam Warlock. I, I probably should have asked you about the High Evolutionary from Guardians of the Galaxy, but I was in the middle of watching Guardians of the Galaxy, and I thought Adam Warlock was going to be the villain, so that's why I did that. But yeah, I, I was kind of expecting Bowser was going to win the poll. So, uh, with my Mario shirt and my analysis skills, let's get right into it. So I think most of us have seen the Mario movie at least once at this point, right? Right? If you haven't, go see it. Okay. Apparently everyone's seen it. Alright, now let's continue on with the video. Now the first thing that came to mind to me about Bowser when making this script is, what is Bowser? Not, not biologically, I think he's like a turtle dragon or something. No, I mean character-wise. How does he fit into the story? Well, he's the villain of course, or is he? That is why this title is called The Perfect Antagonist instead of the perfect villain. Well, actually the perfect villain to perfect antagonist, I'll explain that in just a little bit, is because look at how Bowser acts. Sure, he destroys an entire Ice Kingdom and wants to rule the Mushroom Kingdom after stealing the Superstar, but look at how he orchestrates his plan. Instead of just wanting to rule the Kingdom, he actually wants to marry Princess Peach. That is even demonstrated throughout Mario Odyssey and a few other games, but for the two people who didn't play or see any of the games, this comes as a surprise when Bowser says his plan is to marry Peach. In fact, his entire army is caught off guard upon Bowser saying this. I will ask their princess to marry me in a fairy tale wedding! Yeah! Doesn't she hate you? Of course she hates me. But that makes me love her all the more. The way she floats in the breeze. Her immovable tiara. Oh, ho, 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 wedding bells. Well, what if she says no? It seems that Bowser actually goes through a transformation of a villain I have actually never seen before. He goes from villain to antagonist. Because it starts with Bowser being a dictator and morphing it to an antagonist to where the only thing in Bowser's way is Mario, making him an antagonist. But... What separates a villain from an antagonist? A villain is an evil person where their motives benefit the plot in a malicious way, and an antagonist is a character who is the main enemy of the protagonist. But Bowser is an example of both, because his evil acts benefit the plot at first, but then they slowly shift to being an antagonist to Mario specifically, and is greatly orchestrated how he doesn't take Mario seriously until the end because this guy doesn't seem that much of a threat at first. Now the only problem with Bowser for me is the fact that since the Mario movie is full of references, it goes very fast and doesn't give a lot of the characters much depth. Now I will give it to the benefit of the doubt that since it's a fun family friendly movie with a singing Jack Black and Star-Lord playing a small Italian man, and you probably shouldn't expect that much depth, at least for the first movie. But honestly, I really love how they take Bowser's character Especially being played by Jack Black, Bowser is evil when it comes to his enemies and rulers that are weaker than him or people have something he wants. But when it comes to Princess Peach specifically, he loves her to the point where he sings a piano melody about her and could sound like something that your third grade friend would sing about to their crush. Bowser tries marrying Peach a few different times and he seems to not realize that she has no romantic interest in him. And that is true because he seems to think that he can marry her no matter what so they could unite the kingdoms. Why? Because he's a dictator who is used to getting everything that he wants. That then makes the wedding scene more satisfying when he finally tries to marry Peach. 
That is also where my biggest problem with the movie comes into play, is when Peach ices everybody in the wedding, but it makes me wonder why Bowser didn't think that this would uh this portrayal would happen. It's probably because he is so blinded that Peach secretly loves him, which she obviously doesn't. And now we get to the ending fight, the final battle, where Bowser, who is still frozen, sees Mario, and that puts on him the straw that breaks the turtle's back, and he forgets all about his love for Peach, and goes into full-on rage mode, where he launches a giant bullet bill, the Bomber Bill, to destroy the Mushroom Kingdom, which fails. It then runs into the warp pipe separating this world from the real world of Brooklyn, and blows up sucking Bowser's airship and everyone inside of it and transports it to Brooklyn, and we see the final battle, which actually surprised me of how well done it actually was. We see that now Bowser and Mario go head to head, and Bowser has no sympathy or mindfulness at this point. His eyes become red with rage against Mario for ruining his wedding, once again ignoring the fact that Peach is actually the one who ruined it. Bowser's only motive in this moment is to kill Mario and anyone who gets in his way to destroying him. After some mass destruction and an almost near death experience, Mario hides from Bowser and gets reminded of his purpose. So he steps outside to fight Bowser and Bowser almost kills him and Luigi again. Bowser's fire is even shown to be so hot that it melts a sewer lid, but Mario and Luigi end up getting the superstar, and so long gay Bowser's Bowser into the sky. He then gets shrunk and imprisoned, but not before begging to Peach to give him another chance. We also get a mid-credits scene of Bowser continuing to sing Peaches, showing he is still in love with Peach. So throughout this film, Bowser goes from a villainous dictator, trying to get what he wants, to an antagonist to Mario, and soon everyone around him because what makes a good villain character? You need to see their point of view. That doesn't mean that they have to be right, but you should be able to see their logic in the situation they are in. They also need to have some form of sympathy and or understanding. Does Bowser perfect this? Surprisingly, yes. As a villain, you see he wants to rule the kingdom, the Mushroom Kingdom in particular, but we don't know why until later. We see that later he wants to rule it so he can marry Peach, or vice versa, making him an antagonist in the process. Now, is he being nice to Peach because he wants the kingdom? In my opinion, no. The reason being is because he emphasizes how he wants the wedding to be, and even has intentions of giving her gifts and praise. Is Bowser the best cartoon movie villain though? Uh, out of all the films I've seen, I'm not sure if he's the best of the best, but definitely in the top 5. Because even though I said earlier he doesn't have enough depth, he has enough to where you relate to him and- Wait a minute. What am I talking about? Of course he has enough depth. Just everyone else doesn't. Why is that? Bowser is the only character that seemed to have the most depth put into him. The only thing that they were missing is the Koopalings and Bowser's backstory. But overall, this was, this was how Bowser went from the perfect villain to the perfect antagonist. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And this is actually kind of fun to cover, because honestly, like, I, I never actually got to see Mario movie in theaters, but I, I really wanted to, and so a good buddy of mine, uh, he invited me to his house, we're good friends, and uh, they bought the Mario movie, so we all just sat down and just watched it, ate some pizza, it was a good time. But, um, yeah, also, if you haven't seen the Mario movie yet, uh, uh, I'm sorry for spoilers, you should have probably known that this would have spoilers in it, though. And, uh... You know, if you haven't seen the movie or you want a refresher, I'd recommend go watching it again. It's really good. Uh, man, how did they think of putting Jack Black as a fire-breathing turtle? I don't know, but it works so well. Anyway, I am complex to live. This has been, um, you know, I wanted to try to figure out if I can make this a longer analysis, but I just don't know how to. It's just, I, I feel like if I'm covering a film like this, this is why I like covering YouTube series more, actually, is because uh, they're longer videos, and I get to add more depth into it. But anyway, that was how, as I said, Bowser turned from the perfect villain into the perfect antagonist. And anyway, so I'm Complex Live, and I'll see you guys on the other side. Bye-bye.